Did you know I used to make things out of glass? Well, let's talk about it. Glass reaches its optimal molten state at 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature allows us to blow, shape, and mold the glass into almost anything we can imagine. Not only is gravity a factor, but force in general is the way you move. For instance, centripetal force creates centrifugal force, which is what allows you to do things like this and spin this little blob out into this sort of yoke-like, splashy, interesting object. Ooh, love this little beanie. This guy is interesting because you can see all the copper here on the outside and on the inside. That copper retains its color, kind of frozen in space and time. But also the red comes from the copper oxidizing a bit due to the heat and the nature of the glass. You can use glass to make really regular shapes like this. It looks like some kind of planet with some kind of ring orbiting it. Or you can use it to make these sort of organic, wild, sort of swirling, spiraling, you know, energetic shapes, like this kind of wispy bit stuck inside an old cracky glob. You can fuse copper into glass. Copper anneals at a similar temperature, which basically means it's how it cools down and arranges its molecules as it's cooling down. It's close enough to the glass so they can kind of marry a bit which is how we fused this ring, that tube, and this little tail into this blob. Ooh, this guy contains bronze powder. It's basically bronze powder coating the inside of a bubble that I then kind of squished and extruded and pulled and changed the shape of that bubble as I changed the shape of the outside of the glass to create this interesting looking little top thing. Ooh, here's another one for good measure. Look at that little point. Big pill glob. This is several different layers of colored glass or some of that powder, all kinds of things, all stacked and shaped into a smooth sort of pill shape, which is then plopped on a glob of glass facing on the pipe this way. And then you gather more glass over it, give it a squish, and now you have this weird worm stuck in an old slide. Critter stuck in an old thing. Ooh, sort of a brain in its stem. Smooth brain, that's probably no good if you were gonna use that brain to do any thinking. I also really enjoyed making things that looked like circuits or old electrical components. So this is a very abstract sort of rough looking thing. And this obviously has a bit more, you know, plotting and planning. This thing is meant to look like, I don't know, some old like little insulators. And I, I intended it to be sort of like a splitting headache, you know, which is why it's got this big crack in it. So most of this stuff was made through me bending, breaking, and challenging the fundamental rules of glass by adding things that maybe stressed the glass out and broke it apart, or turning a torch up too high and burning and melting and boiling the surface of the glass to get an interesting texture or color. These were things people told me not to do in my early days. But, you know, I did them anyway, because I think rules are there as guidelines. They help us understand and maybe shortcut our way to, you know, less disaster or something in the end. But we have to challenge them and we have to explore around them to really find the fundamental qualities of whatever material we're working with in order to discover for ourselves how it really works and what we want to do with it. So remember that next time you're challenging yourself or even just poking around with some toilet paper or a pencil, I don't know what you do, but Maybe there's something else you can learn if you get outside of your head and think about how it really works instead of the way people told you it works. All right, that's enough. Goodbye.